Hello everybody, once again this is G, and today I want to show you this here setup that can make all the dirt you ever wanted. And I was inspired by your comments from the previous video, where I kind of briefly touched base on an arbor tree farm, but what I didn't talk about is how an arbor tree farm can be used to produce dirt. So here it is. Now this particular machine produces two tons of dirt every cycle, and of that two tons, it consumes 180 kilos every cycle, which nets you about 1800 kilos. And in addition to that, it is completely self-powered. Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Let me pull up an overlay and we start from the bottom and work our way up. Okay, here we go. So as you can see, we've got several floors here. We've got the residence at the bottom here, Arbor Tree Farm. Then we've got our ethanol at the top and we've got our compost piles down here. The ethanol gets burned into these petroleum generators. Now, I got some direction arrows over here to show you how everything flows. We got lumber going up, converts into ethanol and polluted dirt. Ethanol goes into here, converts into polluted water. Polluted dirt goes into composts and gets converted into dirt. And if you look at the numbers, what we end up happening is we got three kilos of dirt coming off of this machine as an offtake and only have to top up just a little bit of polluted water and the rest of the polluted water just gets recycled from the generators. And then a couple other things we need to add is an oxygen supply, some water, a little bit of food and a little bit of sand for some strategically placed uh, deodorizers here. And we also have the Jeremy water drain that's coming out separately. I want you to note that this is not a spaced out version, but if you stick around, I'll show you in just a minute how we can improve this in a spaced out version and make it way more efficient. All right, now I wanna show you the conveyor setup because this is where it gets interesting. It all starts with this lumber down here and lumber gets picked up, gets put into these loaders and then goes up and then gets unloaded over here into these ethanol distillers. And it also just happens to get chilled over here as it comes up into this block of sedimentary rock. It also gets a little bit cooled and then goes into these uh, ethanol distillers. Now, the next thing that happens is you get polluted dirt coming out. And that's what the second loop is for down here. Polluted dirt comes out and it stops by all of these receptacles that are being uh, used to load uh, polluted dirt into all these compost piles. And it loops this way and it stops right here. And then we have finally the third spiral. Now you can see here the third spiral, it actually starts from this spot. And this is where the dirt was initially loaded, but that's not necessary anymore. And it was getting loaded and it started here. But now it just gets loaded in these loaders here from compost piles, goes around, gets, uh, tops up these receptacles by the trees and then comes up and then it comes out over here. Now on the way out, I want to show you you see, this is really cold, and this is important because you want to chill this dirt because when it's first coming out, it's going to be, let's have a look here, yeah, 40 degrees or more, but when it finally comes out, it's about 17 degrees or 20 or so, nice and comfortable because we don't want to be unloading hot dirt out of here, so this works out actually pretty well. And we have the chiller at the very top over here. And if we look at the temperature, it's actually pretty comfortable down here. You can see it's around 22 degrees, which is perfect for these trees and the dupes, of course. And this is all being cooled by a loop of polluted water that's also feeding these trees. Let me show you. Okay, so you can see here, we actually have our main loop of polluted water down here. And it's circulating through the base and then coming back up here. This particular loop, it's being used for cooling and feeding the trees. And it's being topped up by these uh, generators down here. And there's not enough water coming from generators, so there needs to be just a little bit of top up. So this is what this line is for. And then we have a separate line over here, also with polluted water, and it's being topped up from the main loop. And that's what's cooling it. And the heat exchange is being done by this block over here. Let me show you. Um, we just have a block here of sedimentary rock. You could use something else for more efficiency, but I find this is gradual enough and it's cheap and it does the job. 
Now, like I said, this build is self-powered. So let me show you the power grid here. So first of all, we've got the mains over here. And this is coming off of these generators here. And they're feeding up into these ethanol distillers directly. And then they're feeding some of these transformers. We got these transformers here. That's for the aqua tuners. And the aqua tuners are also being topped up uh, power wise by these steam turbines. But that's not enough. So they have to get a little extra power from the transformers. And then the second set of transformers is actually one on this side and one on this side, but they both feed into the same leg on the primary and then also into the same leg on the secondary. So they're in parallel and you get two kilowatts even, so nothing gets overloaded. And then that just feeds into the rest of this grid. And you can see it's overcommitted as hell, but that's fine. It never really goes out um, over a thousand, so it's fine. And then as for the um, venting, it's uh, pretty simple. We just have an oxygen pipe coming out and this could be improved upon because it's feeding pretty unevenly only on this side. Ideally, we want to feed on both sides so we get a nice even distribution. And then down here we have a CO2 scrubber and it just takes the CO2 and it puts it up here into this. Wow, that's a lot of CO2. So it gets trapped in here essentially and it doesn't go anywhere. And then the oxygen just gets fed back out here. Now, I want to talk about the CO2 here. So in this particular case, we're not doing anything with it. It just gets piled up in here and none of these buildings in here gets overpressured so they can just continue to output CO2 endlessly and this room is just going to get pressurized to the nines essentially and down here this vent is placed strategically because there's a layer of water that keeps constantly getting generated and so you can keep pumping more CO2 into this room if you want and then later on, what you can do with the CO2, you can either put it on scrubbers or slickers or just maybe open a door here and just dump it into space or something. You don't want to waste uh, gas pumps on this. You want to put this, ideally, you want to put this machine closer to space and just open a door and just dump the extra CO2. Now, as for the numbers, in this particular setup, we've got 18 of these trees and they're placed strategically in a way that uh, you can maximize the branches so you always get five branches per tree and when you first set this up you got to trim it uh, uproot the branches so they form in just the right way you want on these outer edges you want to have three and then on these you want to have three and so forth and then just kind of a mix in the middle so 18 trees in this particular setup and then we have 34 of these compost piles that are dupe operated and then up here we got 10 distilleries to match everything and then we only need two and a half petroleum generators, but you know I couldn't build a half a generator, so essentially this guy runs only at well, give or take 50%. But this is controlled by a little bit of automation, like I said, because it's self-powered and it's not tied into the grid. It's got a little bit of automation going on. So let me show you. Yeah, okay, so you can see here, we've got these generators are controlled by these batteries. And I don't know. I don't really like this personally. I would suppose it'd be better to hook this into your grid and not mess around with this. And then over here, we just got some simple automation for the lights. And I was showing this in some other previous videos where you have a sensor and you want to set these buffer gates and you only set them to like, you know, 0.1 seconds and you don't have signal going in the opposite direction. So yeah, but what I really want to show you now is the spaced out version of this because that's where we can really make some serious improvements. All right, here we go. Now you'll notice some things are different. We've got 13 trees now instead of 18. And we've got these grubs. And we also have these doors. What's up with that? Well, I was really interested in some of the comments you guys made about the grubs and how they can tend to other plants. So I thought, hmm, can we use them to tend to these arbor trees? And normally what would happen is these grubs, they would only tend to these lower branches because they simply can't get to any of these other ones. But I thought, what about these doors? Well, the doors will block the branches from growing on the sides here, but that still leaves us with exactly five branches. And if you open the doors, they let the dupes walk right through them, as before. And that doesn't obstruct any movement. But also, you can climb on top of these doors. And that's what you're seeing here. 
these grubs, they can tend to the lower branches as before, but now they can also tend to these upper branches. So all the branches are being tended and that increases the yield of each tree by 50%. So what ends up happening is we actually only need 12 trees instead of 18, but you know, because these things are not 100% efficient and, and it takes them a while to, you know, rub and harvesting takes some time by the dupes. So we added a 13th tree in there and that helps to smooth out the, uh, the process. Now, one thing I want to mention about planting these trees is you first have to plant the tree and once you planted it, then you install the door, not the other way around. Otherwise, if you have the door here, you're just not going to be able to plant the tree in the first place. But once you have the trees, you build your doors and you force them open and you get this kind of a setup and it works really well. All you need is to provide some extra sulfur here to keep these guys fed. Uh, you don't have to, but you know, it's a nice source of mud, which you can use for other things and it works really well. But what I really want to show you is what happens as the end result of this, because remember we have fewer trees. We have same amount of lumber and therefore we have same amount of polluted water coming out. So let me pull up the numbers and you can see what I'm talking about. There we go. Now we're cooking with gas. You can see we've got an actual offtake of polluted water. We don't have to top up anything anymore. So not only does this produce an enormous amount of dirt, this machine also produces some polluted water. And there's a plus here because we're also coupling this with some extra toilet water. So this is without the toilet water, but if you couple the toilet water, you'll actually get a little bit extra. And you can just send it out on one pipe and you can send it to a chlorinator. And then all you need to feed into this then is oxygen as before and clean water and then a little bit extra sulfur. And of course the food and the sand. That's for the uh, deodorizers, which seldomly run because if you maintain the air pressure in here, ideally, there will be really no off-gassing. So these things hardly run. You can even have dupes deliver the sand. That's fine. But I also did some other improvements that I want to show you. For instance, let's have a look at the plumbing. First of all, we got rid of this ethanol buffer nonsense. And I like the approach where if you don't need something, just delete it. You know, don't try to like work around it. And here we just have an offtake pipe. And it's strategically placed in a way where, first of all, if this pipe going to the trees is full, then we're going to start off taking some. And it gets topped up uh, as a priority coming from these generators. And we have a valve here set to 1875, which is the maximum water production rate. And we want to do this to even out the flow of water. Otherwise, you're going to have, you know, large bubbles and small bubbles and all sorts of nonsense going on. We want to have a nice even stream of water. And oh, by the way, same thing here. We have a valve and this is set to 8,483 grams. And what that means is the remaining water after all the trees have taken the water. So you have 10 kilos coming in and you have about 8.5 coming out. And again, this is set to straighten out the bubbles. So we don't have like some smaller and some larger because these trees don't necessarily always consume water at an even rate. So we have this just to even out the stream. And when you do that, you're going to have a nice even stream coming in, nice even 10 kilos coming out and a nice even offtake coming out. You can see here 358 grams actually. And then you couple that with some toilet water and you get extra. And you can send it to a chlorinator. I have one as a mock-up example. Here it is. So simple kind of a setup with several reservoirs and a valve. And you feed that in. And then once this is full enough, uh, non-germy polluted water is going to be coming out. And you can feed that into something else. But anyways, so yeah. One other thing we also removed is some of the automation. You can see here, these are no longer controlled by the batteries. I just left these wires here so the batteries don't complain that they have no wire. And the other thing is we simplified it. We put a timer here instead of having any kind of um, valve here or a shutoff, we just control the chute. Just less is more. 
And these things, they run all the time, as much as they can. And again, you'll see, this runs at 100%, this runs at 100%, and this runs at exactly 50%. So essentially 2.5, 2.5 generators worth of power and water. And the excess power here, it gets thrown out. You can see it's self-powered. It's not connected to the grid. But if you do connect this to the grid, then you'll get some extra power. So in conclusion, what we've got here is a machine that produces dirt, polluted water, and extra power. I mean, how cool is that? But it takes a while to start, and you need quite a bit of dirt and polluted water to get it started. But once you do, it just keeps on going and feeds the rest of your base. And you even get some extra meat from these guys, but eh, that's really not here nor there because they live for 150 cycles. So not really much of a thing. Oh yeah, never mind this ethanol buffer. It's gone now. And I was looking to see where I can build this in the factory. And right now we don't have any arbor trees there, but I think on the second planet is an ideal spot. I already sized out the area there. And it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty good once we find some trees on a different planet altogether. Gonna have to get into some rockets. And we'll do that. But for now, that's all I have for you. This has been Greasy Hammer. And if you like this video, then make sure to smash that like button and subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you very much, everybody. And I'll keep working on the next one. Bye-bye.